on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1. Streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. You're listening to The Jan Price Show. And today my guest is writer-director John Barr. And we're talking about his brand new film, Blood and Money, which stars Tom Berenger. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me, Jen. Great to have you. So, tell this this movie is very uh, a, a, a unique story, actually, and um, and I want to and I want to know how you came up with the concept because you are the writer of it, but also more importantly, um, I want to know how you also attract Tom Berenger to to this project. But let's let the listeners know a little bit about what the plot line of this film is, so they know what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the main character uh, is loosely based on uh, my dad. He um, he lives yeah. in Maine, um, and he uh, basically his life revolves around um, hunting and fishing. Like that's that's pretty much all he does. He's in his mid eight uh, mid seventies right now, and he um, uh, lives in this. Uh, post-apocalyptic recreational vehicle which is featured in the film we actually shot uh with his with his truck Um, wow i know and that was really interesting um so you know he's been living in that for the past four and a half years and he uh it was really interesting because we had to put him in a hotel for uh a month basically so it's kind of like a culture shock for him as well (laughs) um (laughs) but uh yeah so um the, the story uh basically is um he is hunting in the woods and i don't want to give too much away but he um he interacts with a a woman that he finds uh dead on the ground with with um a large uh sack of money and um he interacts with uh other criminals that are involved in the crime uh and basically it becomes a story of uh will and survival uh out in the wilderness and it, it, it definitely is. And did you shot that? You shot this in Maine. Yeah, we shot um, in March of last year, so 2019. Yeah, it looks pretty cold. <laughs> it, it was. It was actually. How cold the, uh, was it? <laughs> um, there were a few nights where it was well below zero. Um, the that scene where he's uh, on the speaking on the phone outside of his truck that was probably the coldest night. Everybody was really suffering that night, um, but it was the largest uh, snowfall in I think forty years. Uh, oh my goodness! So it, yeah, it it actually you know was huge for us because you know we kind of rolled the dice. We didn't have a ton of money to make the film, so we rolled the dice shooting in March after like the uh, school vacation, so accommodation was a little bit more affordable. And in March, you know, it's, you know, knocking on the door of spring, and, you know, sometimes you can get uh, disappointed with the snowfall, and we we did really well. You know, this year, for instance. Outside of... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's right. Go ahead. Outside of what? Uh, You know, if we had shot this year... um, you know, outside of what's happening in the world with the with the um, virus, you know, the snowfall was was uh, a fraction of what it was last year, so it wouldn't have been as dynamic. So it was perfect. So we timing. really liked that. Yeah, yes, you did. Perfect timing. That's wonderful. So um, you started your career as a cinematographer, and this is the first movie you've directed. Now I can, de- and you also did the cinematography on this, and it's very clear. You can, uh, I mean, the cinematography is just is is lovely in this film. Um, how, what was it like for you? You wrote it and directed it and also um, being the director of photography. What was that like for you to wear all those different hats? Uh, it was really, you know, it, it felt actually quite natural, um, you know, to have the camera uh, on my shoulder most of the time and being so close to the actors, being able to communicate with them. It, it made a lot of sense, actually. Um, uh, you know, as far as writing, I, you know, this is for sure my, you know, first ever endeavor Um and, you know, I, I wrote many drafts to get to the point where it was marketable, like to show to friends and family. And um, I actually brought on a couple other writers um, after I felt good about it, you know, just to help me, um, you know, get it over, 
you know, get it to that next point where it was actually um, shootable. And so how long did it take you to write this? It's actually quite quick. Once once the idea um, came, you know, to me, uh, maybe three months before I had a script that I felt like was was really um, was really in a good place. So it was, it was quick. That yeah, is quick. Actually. That is very quick. Yeah. So how did your father feel about you sort of writing mm-hmm. about him? <laughs> Well, I Using think him uh, as your character study. Yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting. Like I, um, he obviously was flattered and excited about. You know, obviously he's a big fan of Tom's, and to have him, you know, playing him was, you know, it, it was it was really uh, exciting for him. Um, uh, outside of that, like he hasn't seen the movie yet, so I'll be curious to to get his take once he watches the full film. But um, you know, I think he, you know, he was really excited to be a part of it. Yeah. Did he? Did you put him in any of the roles at all? No, I tried. He... Like there, you know, there was the, um, you know, the AA scene um, at the VFW hall. I I tried to get him as as like just an extra to sit in and right. Right, right. He didn't want to, but I think he regrets it, to be honest. But, um, you know, but uh, yeah, it's it's the choice he made in the moment. So, yeah, exactly. So tell me, how did you attract Tom Berenger? I mean, Tom Berenger has been nominated for an Academy Award in the past and he's been in so many wonderful movies. Uh, how did you yeah. attract him to this project? We, um, you know, after this, the script was in a place where we could start shopping it around, we um uh, hired a casting director, um, Tannis Vallely, who's amazing. She's she's such a great great woman. Um, she uh, put together a list of you know we had a list obviously as well, and and she had she came up with her own ideas and concepts, and we decided on on Tom, and we basically I guess the protocol is to go to his manager and uh, have him read the material, and you know, uh, Jeff Goldberg is his name, and he it resonated with him. He really loved it and, uh, got Tom on board. Um, uh, after, you know, after he read the script, he phoned Tom and, and sent it to him and Tom loved it as well. Wonderful. So what was it like working with Tom Berenger? Um, it was amazing. Like he's, he's a, he's a great man. Like he, he's a hard worker. He trained, um, for a few months, you know, cause this, the elements were, were quite brutal at times up in Maine. Yes. And he, and he knew that. So he, he took the time and the, and he dedicated himself to, to training and getting in shape. And to be honest, he was, he was actually in, in a better place than a lot of the crew members. Like I, I had a lot of friends from LA come and help me on the film and, you know, uh, it took them much more time to acclimate to the conditions than it did Tom. <laughs> did he go up to uh, Maine in the winter time and acclimate to it ahead of time? Is that what? It was? No, no, no. I think no? He, he just trained, like you know, uh, just getting his body in shape for the conditions, and then he. I think he came up maybe a week early just to do some, you know, camera tests and wardrobe and makeup and all that. Um, but yeah, he wasn't there for for very long, and, and then we just got right into shooting. So this movie is um, what I call a quiet movie and it goes and it's really kind of a very um, kind of looking and observing what this man's life is. And there's very little dialogue in this film. Um, yes. And so it takes a really um, good actor to and, and there's not a lot of interaction with a lot of other people throughout this film no. either. So it's solely no. him, pretty much him. I mean, there's a few scenes with some people, but it's solely him um, takes quite an amazing actor to be able to do that and to convey what he's going through. Um, was yeah. that, how, how is that? And as far as, cause given the fact that you don't have a lot of, because actors play off of one another. I mean, that's what, you yeah. know, that's what they enjoy doing. You know, if they get a good totally. scene partner. They love that where they can get into it. I studied acting, but that you can, when you can get, you know, toe to toe and really dig in. Um, so for this film where it's, it, it's very quiet for until the, you know, until we get to some really, um, really interesting points in the film. And we'll talk a little <laughs> bit about that. Um, yeah. Where you build the tension, you're actually just building this, but we're just observing and watching this. How, how was that for him? How difficult was that for you as a director and for him as an actor to be in a place where you're not really interacting with others in, in the film at all? Um, well, for me, like, so basically, so that's how my dad lives. You know, he lives a very nomadic life. You know, he, he does have friends and he, and he, 
does interact with people, but for the majority of the time he's, he's alone. Um, and he, he prefers that to be honest. So, um, you know, for Tom to kind of parallel that lifestyle, I don't think it was, you know, he, Tom lives with his wife, but he, he has funny enough, he lives in a big RV as well and travels the country, um, stays on the East coast primarily. But, um, I don't think it was very hard for him to transition into that, into that role, to be honest. Um, I, I think you would have to ask him, you know, more in depth about that, but, um, you know, and as far as me directing him, like we had many conversations before we actually shot just about who this guy was and, and how he um, just behaved in the world. And, and, you know, I think we both had a pretty good understanding of who he needed to be. So once we started shooting, there wasn't really that much communication that needed to happen between us. We would just um, go to the scene, you know, go to the location, talk about the scene very briefly and just execute. And, um, we did, we didn't have to do very many takes of anything. You know, he, uh, you know, he's on point throughout That's the whole great. thing. That's great. How many days did it take to shoot this film? Uh, it was quick, uh, 20 days. Oh, that, that is quick. That is quick. Yeah. So again, this movie kind of goes very slowly and then all of a sudden <laughs> yeah, kind of the switch flips. It, it does. Yeah. It does. Um, so, uh, Okay, so you're, how did you come up with the idea of? What do, let's do. Do we want to talk a little bit about what happens? Why you know what happens to him and why it's called blood and money? Yeah, I mean, I is is that okay to go into yeah about that? Or? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I think so. Okay, I think so. Yeah. So, um, so basically, he uh, Tom's character is in the woods, and he. Um, is hunting it's winter and he takes a shot at a buck and he misses and the frustration builds within him and he tracks this this buck through the woods trying to find him to get another opportunity at taking him down and he hastily shoots at something that he doesn't have a very clear uh idea of what it is like he thinks it's the deer because he's been tracking it but um it ends up being a woman who's out in the woods and he accidentally shoots this person and kills them. And uh, beside this dead woman now is a bag of money. And she was involved in a crime uh, that happened a few days before. And she has four other accomplices that were involved in this crime. And and Jim, the lead character, uh, basically has to defend himself uh, against these four people in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And and harsh conditions and the cold yeah, and everything else. So, yeah. and they, you really build that up beautifully. The score, I love the score of this film too, oh, it's because amazing. yeah. You know who who is your who is the composer on this film? So uh, his name's Zach McNeil. He's um, he is in the camp of Hans Zimmer. He he's he came up through that camp. Um, he. Uh, He's amazing. He's brilliant. Like we came up with uh, some really great ideas and then he just took them to another level. Um, he, I, I, I will have him be a part of my, uh, every film that I make from now on. Mm. It's great. I mean, he, he did, did it in such a short window. He did it in such a short window because again, we had no real financing for post-production. So everything was done uh, very quickly. Well, he, you know, it, it really does help build the, te- you know, the quietness of the film and then builds the tension and the, the score just really, you know, enhances what's going on on the screen. And, very, you know, it, it so often it doesn't always happen that way, but this score was really yeah. great. It's kind of like Spielberg always works with John Williams. So you have found yeah. your, uh, your, your musical muse exactly. <laughs> say, exactly. on this yeah. film. So what was the most difficult part of filming this other than being in winter in uh, Maine? <laughs> um, to be honest, like I, I'm sure you could ask every other crew member and they could list a thousand things, but I, for me personally, I, there was nothing that ever was that difficult. There were some locations that were incredibly challenging to get to. Um, uh, but, you know, Sousa, my producer, you know, planned things out, uh, in a way that you, it was incredibly efficient. So we never, you know, we never really, I never really felt anything that was incredibly difficult. Um, 
obviously like there were incredibly cold conditions, like which are challenging. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it, it went exactly how I wanted it to go. That's great for a first time <laughs> director to hear you say yeah. that. That's pretty yeah. amazing right yeah. there. Wow. Wow. If you're yeah. just tuning into the jam price show all about movies, my guest today is director, writer, and cinematographer John Barr. And we're talking about his first movie that he's ever directed called Blood and Money, starring Tom Berenger. Who has inspired you as a filmmaker? What you know, what made you decide to cross over from being a cinematographer to becoming a writer, director? And was was there somebody um that has inspired you to along the way to um go in that direction? Yeah, I mean, there's there's been quite a few um, experiences that I've had that have like inspired me for sure. I think the you know one that sticks out in my head. Um, I I had the great fortune of working on um, a film film called uh, Capote that Bennett Miller directed and Phil Hoffman starred in, and um, you know their their relationship. I was the gaffer on that film. Um, there were their relationship on set was was something that just um, was incredibly unique there you know the way if you know obviously phil's Hoff, phil hoffman's performance oh, was loved um, him incredible yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and you soon. know the, yeah for sure for sure and he um you know embodied this this character and and became him and you know it was just fascinating to me um and you know i obviously i wasn't ready to to make the jump at that point, you know, um, but, you know, there were so many like stages and steps throughout my career that, you know, that got me to this point, you know, um, Frost Nixon was another film that I was a part of and, you know, watching Ron, you know, Howard direct, um, Frank and Michael Sheen, like it was, it was amazing, you know, like, and to have those experiences, uh, definitely, um, you know, inspired me for sure. What was it like working with Ron Howard? Were you a cinematographer on that film on Frost Nixon? Um, I was a gaffer for first. A gaffer, and okay. That was kind of um, my transitioning point into into shooting. Um, uh, Sal Satino, who was the director of photography on that, gave me the um, the opportunity to shoot second unit. So that was a uh, you know a huge turning point for me. It was it was amazing, um, and yeah, I mean there were many you know second unit days where I was with Ron and. Um, and you know it's it's amazing like he has so much energy and he's so um articulate about what he wants and um yeah he's he's incredible yeah he is he's a great director i don't think he's ever made yeah. a bad movie no. <laughs> <I think that's, laughs> it's all great movies so, yeah. so for you what's next on your on for you at this stage are um, you going to direct some more, write some more, or go back to being yeah. a photographer? Or you know, since you wore no, all the hats on this, do you want to do all of it again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would for sure. Um, I, we have um, a couple scripts that are that are finished and just kind of getting fine tuned. One of them is um, uh, it's funny enough, like I'm using inspiration from my family. It's uh, the main the main character is based on my sister, who's a who's a midwife in Colorado. Um, so it's kind of like a um, you know, psychological thriller, you know, based on this, this, uh, this main character. Um, mm. and, uh, who knows, like in this, in this world right now, when it'll, um, start to get traction, but you know, that's kind of what I'm focusing on right now. So you're in the writing process of that right now? Um, it's finished, you know, it's finished. so it's, um, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, just kind of sending it out to people and, um, majority of it takes place in, in Europe. So we've started talking with uh, production companies over there and, and trying to figure out um, what, co- what country makes the most sense. So how has this pandemic affected the release of your film, Blood and Money? When was, I know it's going to be, we'll talk about where, when it's going to be out, but um, how has it affected the release of this because initially you probably were planning on being released to movie theaters correct it was yeah it was um it was a theatrical i think it was um you know it was small it was like a 10 city 20 screen or something like that um uh release but still it would have been would have been really nice to um to see it in that in that format um i i have seen it projected a few times when i was grading and then also at um the american film market we uh we had it 
a couple screenings there, which, you know, it was great to see it on the big screen with, with people in the audience, you know, um, uh, I think that's probably the biggest um, way that it's impacted, you know, um, as far as, you know, going straight to video, like so many films are doing that now. I think it, right. it I don't know necessarily that it'll hurt us, you know, like, cause everybody's still quarantined and on, you know, it's coming out May 15th. I think that it'll, you know, we'll still be in a similar state as a country. So, um, you know, it could, it could be great. Like it could be some good entertainment for people to watch at home. Oh, I definitely think it's great entertainment for people to watch at home because everybody's looking for <laughs> content right now. And, and this is yeah, what exactly. it'll be. So on May 15th, it'll be on video on demand and, and where else on, on some uh, digital stations too. Yeah, it'll be, digital. um, you know, on Apple TV, uh, you know, for iTunes, I guess, um, you know, and every, you know, uh, like Spectrum, Comcast, uh, um, you know, uh, VOD platforms. Um, outside of that, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think like Amazon, you can, you'll be able to rent or buy it. Um, you know, just all, all those types of platforms. That's great. So this is highly, highly recommend people look for blood and money um, when you're sitting at home looking for something to watch. What, um, I don't know if you've read uh, just in the trades the last couple of days, but um, there's a big right now Universal is uh, saying that they're because they had such success when they released their Trolls movie on video on demand. Uh, they, I think they made a hundred million dollars, you know, and yeah. so now they're it's decided not to release their films uh, and use, you know, the, the uh, 90 day, you know, theatrical window that's uh, typical for most releases. And they're going to put it on, you know, on demand right away. And AMC, yeah. AMC is the, they're going to they also want to put it in movie theaters at the same time. But AMC right. has come out and said they will not, you know, play any of their uh, films at all and i think another uh, uh, movie uh, theater chain also has come out and said the same thing what are your thoughts about that do you you know given the fact that this is your first film and you didn't really get to have a theatrical release and you're going on video on demand and to you know the digital outlets what are your thoughts about theatrical releases versus you know releasing them at home i mean i i I think there's a place for both to be honest i um I think, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people agree, like, uh, you know, going to the theater is a completely unique experience, you know, like you, you don't get that at home. Um, it's all encompassing. You, you, you know, sometimes have hundreds of people around you. Um, it's just a different thing completely. So, and it's amazing. So I, I don't think that'll ever go away. I, I'm sure that, you know, AMC and I'm not sure of the other chain, but, you know, I'm sure they'll figure out a balance and a happy place because they have to, you know, like, you know, these huge tentpole films like are still going to need a place to be seen in the, you know, in the theater. So like, there's going to have to be some sort of compromise. Um, but it is, you know, it's the way that the the world is going. Right. I mean, like people watch content at home and, you know, this whole virus is kind of like, you know, hit that home even harder. So I think there'll be a balance, you know, what that is like, it's hard to say at this point, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure they'll figure out some sort of compromise. I hope so. I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about, you know, after this ends, there's been lots of editorials out there about when this ends, that movie theaters are going to survive the pandemic. But, I, you know, I agree with you. I think movie, I always say, this is something I, I say all the time on the show, that movies should be seen in the movie theaters. Uh, yeah. they, you know, and the, that experience cannot be re- replicated at home. They just is it. And your film, because the cinematography is so lovely in this film that, you know, I see it on the big screen would only enhance the experience of this movie. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. And, and, and so, to your point, the score as well, like hearing the yes. score in, in, a, in a full, you know, fully loaded uh, theater would be, you know, would be amazing. It would, be. Not gonna happen. it would be. Yeah, <laughs> not 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 this one, but your next one for sure. <laughs> your next one for sure. Yeah. That you you know that you're working on. Well, John, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, and I wish you much success with Blood and Money, which is going to be out on May 15th. Thank you very much, Jan. I really appreciate it. Thank you. If you've missed any of the Jam Price shows. You can now listen to them on the iHeart Podcast Network and on your smart TV. Thank you for listening. 
Podcast on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1. Streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. 